Okay, for anyone who isn't familiar with content creation like I am, the content space is one with many aspects that change in size, depth, and extent. One popular niche universally, for example, is the classic React genre, which, if you don't know, is basically pretty much just sitting down in front of a camera, recording the computer screen, watching a piece of content, and showing their reactions. Are you following? That is the complete set of actions pretty much anyone needs to take hypothetically if they want to make their own React videos. This is why in this era of content creation, the React genre is one of the most created and subsequently most consumed genres on the face of the internet. But a question, and frankly a whole legal issue, has stemmed from this whole thing. How much of it is actually creative and that's what I'm going to get into today. Honestly, I've been wondering about it just as much as the general audience has, and I think it's very important to think about the media you want to consume and how it could be better and more entertaining. React videos have been around for a long time, even off the web where Japanese celebrities were being grilled on random videos, so it's not like it's an unliked concept or anything like that. But in the modern age, where everyone sees and can randomly generate an opinion on anything, things aren't as clear cut as they could be, since not everyone has the proper and accurate information. With that being said, something has happened recently, something that actually has happened multiple times already, but recent controversy has reared its ugly head once more. So basically, XQC is known for reacting in a particular way, and that particular way isn't exactly the most verbal. It's actually so bad that I'm pretty sure there have been compilations made where he is saying absolutely nothing as the video is playing for an uncomfortably long time, or he says something about what's going on for maybe one or two seconds and then sits in silence for 45 seconds seconds until something he thinks is worth saying something about shows up, if it ever shows up. Recently, he's been called out for this very frequently to the point where social media celebrities from the online space are going onto their phones and propping their cameras up on their tripods to give old Felix a piece of their minds. Then in some unspecified way, Ethan Klein offers to talk with XQC on the H3 podcast and X decided to take him up on his offer. I think anyone at this point would gladly accept to talk about anything with XQC just to see what he does. I'll just let the footage speak for itself a little bit. People would rather watch me full screen cam do the fucking warm do than, watch your prime, Bro, than watch your do prime it for content. A week. Do a week of no reaction content and see how many fucking views you get. Oh, he's crying in the corner. He, oh, okay, sure. I mean, that's content, man. It's, ori oh, it's original that's, that's content, cool. at least. Like yes, it? do that, bro. Like do it? It? That's like that, yes. Dude, do I it. You fucking week. love it, man. Bro. This is the most done you've yes, in the great. past fucking four years, bitch. It's, it's awesome. Do it. And in an obviously failing attempt to defend his points, which we'll get into in a second, he fucking engages in a session of worm dance battling with himself. I personally think Ethan made some reaches, some distant grasps in the space, but most of what he went into is pretty accurate. See, the thing here is that XQC isn't the only person to do React content on video platforms online recently, nor was he the first ever to do it in the modern era of video. Most old heads in the space know about Jinx, which was arguably the most popular reaction channel on YouTube for quite some time. I'm guessing the biggest reason why he became so popular was just because he was one of the first. And the earlier you started, the more likely that people would have been interested based on novelty. I'm sure there was a point where no one was watching React content on the internet. And you know what? At a certain point, even Jinx himself got some criticism. The same kind of criticism that I'm going to get into. So much so that he eventually was driven away from the platform because he just didn't want to deal with it anymore. The biggest criticism was that he didn't seem like he was paying attention to what was going on. Many reactors have gotten the same grievance communicated to them in their chat on Twitch and their comments on YouTube, and some of them didn't respond very well. XQC and Jinx sure didn't, and their defense was that the content would be inauthentic if they started being over the top with the expressions that they exhibit during the reaction, which is actually a pretty funny thing for X to 
say, considering the faces he uses for his thumbnails, would usually not be an expression found at any point in the reaction. This is what is commonly known as the react harder complaint in the modern age. In my humble opinion, you don't need to be saying something at every point during your reaction, but the fact that the only thing you can think to say is, yo, that's crazy, or laughing every couple of seconds, kind of makes it seem like you don't want to react to this particular content. And if that's the case, why react to it? You're not interested in the genre, the topic, and or the subject matter presented in the video. It's almost like playing a game for a let's play that you're just not into. People might notice that you're not all that happy to be playing this game, and you might even start getting pissed while playing the game. You don't need to be talking at every point, but for fuck's sake, if you're interested in what's going on and the video isn't extremely short, I feel like you'd be able to say more than a couple of things about what's going on if you wanted to. If someone was reacting to my video and they just sat there the whole time, I'd feel a little ripped off. The other thing that people have been clamoring about is that people aren't sure whether the reaction benefits the creator more than it benefits the reactor. And personally, there is some nuance, not much, but some. The reason for that is that the reaction video could potentially be interpreted as essentially a straight up rebroadcasting of the original video. Not only is that just poor form as some people claim that creators who usually end up amassing millions of views and subscribers, which I'll get into a little more later, have the potential to give the original creator of the video more engagement overall through views, whether it be through Twitch or Twitter or YouTube or TikTok or Instagram even, anything is possible these days. But the problem is, what about when it doesn't? There's a bit of a case study that happened late in 2022, where a content creator by the name of Dark Viper AU wrote seemingly a manifesto that pretty much mapped out the reasons why he was not privy to having people react to his content. Some of them were understandable, some of them were eh. But this sentiment still stands in many content creators today. A lot of them don't want bigger reactors to react to their content, one of them being referenced in the Ethan XQC debate. Well, because one is a paid actor, right? Which huh? I think, well, I mean, it's this is exactly, I mean, that's a paid actor, 100%. Wait, what? What um, did you say? It's Oh, it's a paid actor. He's he's a paid actor. Yeah, that is what it is. He didn't want X to react to his content because he didn't do certain things. But he let Hasanabi, Hassan Piker, react to his content because he does certain things. So I figure, if that's the case, Hassan must be doing something right. And I actually watch a lot of his content, so that leads to this next point. I watch videos from some channels that I think do a pretty good job of making reaction content. Some of those are Hasanabi, Alicia X Death, Simba the God, and Asmongold. See, I was very inclusive. Two bigger creators, two smaller creators, two male creators, two female creators. So here are some things that I think they do well, but I also think anyone who wants to react should be thinking about when making react content. Do you have something to say about the content being shown on the screen and you aren't just laughing when something funny happens or being like, damn that's crazy in my opinion and to be fair a lot of people's opinions that just seems like lazy content and barely even passing as any kind of commentary do you give yourself a chance to breathe so that you can explain yourself but also don't end up missing anything that could be happening in the video a lot of people make fun of youtubers for pausing i mean even chats on twitch tell streamers to shut the fuck up and stop pausing whenever they even think about resting their hands on their space bars i think it's a really silly thing to be upset about unless they're not even really talking about the video they're just like five finger dip thanks for the sub or they're just stopping to tell you to like and subscribe that shit is just trash no one has cared Cared. No one is caring. No one will care. Get the fuck out with that shit. With Hassan, his videos are much different from his streams. Unlike many channels where they pretty much keep in all of the dead space in the stream where the dude in the corner of the screen isn't actually saying anything, some streams like Asmongold's and Alicia X Deaths do pretty well without it just with the way they run their streams, which translates to the videos that are basically rips of those streams. But again, as the Vince Vintage situation makes clear, at the end of the day, if you're going to put in minimal effort, it's essentially going to be a re-upload of content, which not only the content creators and their communities don't take very lightly, but YouTube won't take very lightly either. You don't want to get caught up in that. Sniper Wolf seems to have actually done that exact thing, and uh, I'll just leave that for Jack's Films to explain. The link will be in the description. So what happens when React content becomes React content? Eventually, 
A lot of people want to confront you and suddenly you're doing the worm on the floor in front of tens of thousands of people.